Hi everybody, this is the Cricket Badger Radio Show Podcast. Each badger marks the track with its own scent. His black legs are short but very powerful for digging. In fact, the name badger probably comes from the French word beche, meaning digger. It's that badger style. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are listening to this. A very warm welcome to the Cricket Budget Radio Show podcast this week. When we're looking ahead to the Indian Premier League 2019, the 12th edition of the IPL, it's coming very soon. I'm joined by DJ from the Edges and Sledges podcast. Congratulations to them, by the way, for just passing their milestone of 50 podcasts. And over the next hour, we talk all things IPL. DJ has been on the Badger pod before, and I led that chat, so it's only seemed right and fair to let him be the one to steer this one that's why you hear his voice first you hear a bit more from me as a result which may or may not delight you we chat netflix we chat the mumbai indians do english cricket fans like the ipl and is it cricket's equivalent to the english premier league football and there's also a little bit about the hundred coming up on this show is it a knee-jerk reaction to the success of leagues like the ipl and then we run the rule over each of the eight franchises and pick our 2019 IPL winners. I would suggest it's probably one of the hardest years to call this year. And it's all here on the Cricket Badger Radio Show Podcast. Contact us on at cricket underscore badger on Twitter or cricketbadger at hotmail.com if you fancy sending us an email. And please like, subscribe and leave some lovely comments so others can be encouraged to get involved too. Settle back, enjoy this week's show. IPL 2019. We can't wait. It's that badger style. This week, we've got James with us of the Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast. James, if you guys remember, joined us on a joint podcast that we did just after the India versus England series last summer. We're delighted to have James back on our podcast. And James, thank you so much for joining us this week. It's a pleasure, DJ. Good to be with you. Yeah, it's great to speak again, isn't it? So it's, it's all about making cricket podcasts popular. And if yours is popular and mine is popular, that's all good. I suspect yours is more popular than ours, but we're trying. Anyway, so we just thought we'd get together this week to, to chat about the IPL. The IPL is coming up in a week's time. Everyone's getting pumped about it on social media. James is looking forward to a great summer of cricket. On, on, on if, you, if you followed his podcast, his last podcast was all about the summer of cricket. So one of those elements is the IPL. So James, do you watch the IPL? I, I do. I, I'm very much into the IPL. I've watched it all the way through. It's coming into its 12th year now, isn't it? So it's been uh, over 10 years now watching the cricket from India. We've seen quite a few of the faces change, but big names playing in the IPL year on year. And I think it's, that, it's just a fascinating competition. I really do. Yeah, and that, that's a lot of cricket games to watch. So why do you watch it? Do you actually <laughs> really enjoy it? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, DJ. I get paid to watch some of it. So that's <laughs> that's a motivation because I write mm-hmm. some previews and need to to kind of see what's going on but I just enjoy it I, I've, um, I'm a cricket traditionalist I, I, I love test match cricket I love the county championship over here in England but I do really like T20 cricket as well I like the big bash league too I, mean, I, I watch as much of it as I can and I think the way the IPL has gone over the years it, it burst onto the scene 12 years ago it was fantastic then I do think it dipped a little bit and I think big bash caught up with, with it to a degree but I think the Big Bash has had a bit of a ropey winter and I think the IPL is certainly the foremost T20 competition in the world at the moment and would that be a fair assessment from English fans who are not paid to watch cricket because what I think we're quite keen to understand is what the attitude of non-Indian fans is to the IPL because we're massive fans of it and we follow it and we're all pumped for it but what do people outside India really think of it particularly the English fans yeah I I think if you analyse it obviously from an Indian perspective perspective you've got the young Indians playing which a lot of people in this country won't relate to but then again you've got the big stars you know we've we've seen increasingly over the last few years as well English players going across to the IPL Joss Butler did fantastically well and forced himself back into England test selection because of his form for Mumbai we've got a a few English players playing again in it this time because there was a period where the ECB didn't let English players play in the IPL but now they are doing and it's a chance for them obviously to go over there and and, and earn some money but but important 
importantly, probably even more importantly this time, as we talked about on last week's Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast, the IPL is going to be a bit of a litmus test and a chance for some people to put their hands up for selection for A, the World Cup, although I think England's World Cup team is pretty much nailed down, and the ashes that follow, because England have shown over the last 12 months that they're more than happy to pick players for England's test team off the back of T20 or one day form. So for a few of the players going out there, it's a chance to really say, you know, I'm here, select me. And it's interesting, James, that you mentioned that because we spoke last week on our podcast as well about how the number four slot, which is up for grabs in the Indian team, for better or for worse, is actually going to be decided by form and fitness through the IPL. So we've got about five people vying for that one slot. It's the wrong way of doing it, DJ. In my opinion, you should never select anybody to play test match cricket off the back of T20 form because it's so different. You know, Josh Butler, he's coming to the England test team. He's done OK. You know, I can't knock him for his last 12 months in the England test team, but he should never be be picked off the back of forming a T20 competition because the shots are different, the mentality is different, you know, the psychology of batting in a, in a short version of T20 matches where you, you can make your name and become man of the match for, from facing 25 balls. A test match you need to knuckle down and possibly bat for a day and a half. It's a totally different game. It's, it's almost a different sport these days. And I think selecting from IPL, Big Bash or any of the other tournaments around the world for the longer form is the wrong way of going about it. And I think that's probably a fair comment. But with the way England now play one-day cricket, where they've basically taken T20 cricket and extended it over 50 overs, I think actually uh, someone like a Joss Butler has just found his his um, his niche playing T20 cricket and just just transposing that over 50 overs. With India's problem, problems particularly chasing massive totals, I think actually the IPL is coming at the right time for us. But I do agree with you that using T20 form to select a test side is is quite tricky. Although I, we I, have seen it in the last year. Yeah, I, I think Joss Butler is a, a bad example because Joss Butler is a, a world-class player. And you know you tend to find that a world class player can pretty much make a fist of any format. It's when you get some of the the lesser players, maybe the standard below, who score a rapid thirty four, followed by a rapid forty three, a failure, then a fifty two in an IPL tournament. I don't think that necessarily qualifies you to bat in Test match cricket. Have you got any particular players in mind? I mean, Joe Denley's playing in in this one, isn't he? And he's he's just making his way into the England teams in the various formats. He's probably going to play in the World Cup. He played in the in the um, test matches over the winter. Now, if Joe Denley goes to the IPL and scores a load of runs, yeah, you know, he's he's likely to further his case for being in the Ashes team come the test matches in in the in the English summer. I don't think that necessarily makes any difference to me as to whether Joe Denley is a test match player or not. Yeah, other people will think differently. England selectors think differently. And they look at you know, all sorts of different scoring charts and, and stats to make their decisions these days. But you know, I, I don't think scoring a few 50s in, in T20 cricket makes you any more or less likely to be a good Test match player. Excellent. So can, can we just move on to the IPL teams that we have? We've got eight teams. Is that particular team you support in the IPL? And if so, why do you support that team? I wouldn't say I support them. I, I just got a, a, a bit of a soft spot for the Mumbai Indians. I know they're one of the big franchises over there. Well followed, probably second behind Chennai Super Kings. Is that would that be a fair assessment? I, I'd say so. I mean, the the Mumbai Indians have got have just had a Netflix documentary released about them. So yeah, have you watched that yet? I have watched that. Yeah, and I, I found it fascinating. It got me fantastic. It got me in the mood for this season's IPL, and I, I thought it was good because you you look at the way the Mumbai Indians have played over the last uh, six years or so. They've they've won an IPL. They've then disappointed. They've won, and they they're alternating. They didn't do so well last year. So I think I I actually fancy them to bounce back this year. I'm a big of Mahela Jai Wardner and he's their head coach and I think he's got a very level head on him and I think there's some very very good young players in that Mumbai Indians side too I think can uh, can really do a job this time if you look down their lineup you've got Rohit Sharma their captain I think he's a, a, a terrific player didn't have the best of IPLs last time but I think if he plays anything like he's one of the best limited over batsmen in the world I, I love the tree trunk Kieran Pollard and um, the West Indian he's he's Built like a, and I can't really say the words on a, on a family podcast, but he is huge. And when he gets going, he can really blast the ball all over the place. And I like watching him bat. He can win a match, you know, chase down anything over the last two or three overs of an innings. And on that Netflix documentary you mentioned, I thought it was very interesting to see him behind the scenes because he's quite a level-headed fella. And he was not afraid to speak up in a dressing room and tell people what he thought of them. And I think as a, as a team man, um, he, he came across very well in that. 
youngsters. You've got the Pandias. I think they're terrific. Markant, the leg spinner, he's a, um, a real big prospect. And one of my favourite players, Ishan Kishan's another one, but Yadav, the opener, I really like him. He, he scored um, over 500 runs in the IPL last year. And I just like the way he goes about it. In, in that Netflix documentary, you saw him going off and getting his bats sorted out by one of the local shops where he lived. And I just, he seemed to be a nice fella. And he, see, and he knows how to score runs in T20 cricket. I, I think Yadav has every chance of, uh, of winning the, uh, the cap for scoring the most runs in this yeah, week. And he's a beautiful batsman to watch as well. I mean, I, while I was watching the documentary, I was like, why are we pitching this guy for the Indian team? We've had all yeah. these other people try out. We should have given him a shot. And I think what went against him is he plays for a franchise like the Mumbai Indians. And that's just the fact of it. If you play for them and you open the batting, you're expected to score runs. And I mean, I think if he done the job for another franchise like, I don't know, Sunrisers or uh, Punjab. He, he may have been the reckoning for an Indian call-up yeah. after after last year's IPL. Yeah, well, if he has another good uh, another good one this time, it's, you know, maybe not too late for him to force his way in, is it? Okay, so there's a, there's a few in the Mumbai Indian side too. I, I really do rate and I like watching them play. Thank you so much for all your comments on the Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast. It is much appreciated as it goes from strength to strength. You can find the podcast every single week on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Deezer, Radio Public. We're growing. Grow with us. Have your say on all things cricket. Contact us on Twitter at cricket underscore badger. By email, cricketbadger at hotmail.com. Comment on things mentioned in shows. Suggest future topics for future programs and get involved as the Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast continues to go from strength to strength. What I actually wanted to get your thoughts on is the relationship between obviously Mahela Jayawardhana being the coach and, and Robin Singh and those guys and they were obviously excellent having been ex-players. What did you think of the relationship between the Ambani's who are the team owners and the players because is it quite a lot like Premier League owners where they're massively invested in the teams and follow their um, follow their progress and stuff like that because that is one element we, we don't actually think about very often but is there a parallel between the Premier League there with I don't know a Roman Abramovich with Chelsea or, or something like that or the Manchester Manchester City owners but do you see do you see the parallels between the EPL and, and the IPL there? I certainly do and I think um, and Barney Senior I mean, he's one of the richest men in the world isn't he that house that he's got is just incredible even to have one room in that house would be fantastic but to have that whole block is just immense and his son's almost it's a, it's a little bit strange isn't it you know his, his son's been almost gifted the, the franchise to run and he's passionate isn't he he came across as really passionate he's a fan he's, he, we've seen him as a kid um, on the sidelines watching the Mumbai Indians play and he's grown up now to become a man and to actually almost, you know, run that franchise he certainly comes across very much as a fan doesn't he He's a fan with a shed load of money behind him, but he's very much a fan. That's not a bad thing. I think enthusiasm in, in sport can get you an awful long way. But there were times, I thought, where you watched him and he, he was he was stood there as a fan rather than as, as the owner or as the manager. And there is maybe just a slight conflict there because, you know, as a fan, you can get attached to players. You know, you, you, you heard um, Mahaila Jaya Wardner on the documentary talking about Kieran Pollard and saying that, you know, over the last few years, his, his form has gone down. But if you saw at the auction when um, Ambani Jr. they'd bought Polly for another another stretch, he was so excited to have him. And it's almost like, you know, he's my favourite player. We're going to buy him. We're going to buy him. And then Mahaila Jaya Wardner was kind of saying, on the other hand, well, his form's going down and his returns aren't quite as big. He's a fantastic player, Kieran Pollard, and I would imagine most franchises would snap your hands off for him. But there, there can be a conflict, kind of, between being a fan, having loads of money, and being the boss. It kind of sometimes maybe crosses over a little bit too much. And I did think as well at times, um, DJ, that when you saw the post-match meetings and Mahaila Jaya Wardner was trying to get his message across and Kieran Pollard was chirping up and Rohit Sharma was saying his bit. And then one of the Ambani's came in and started saying their bit. It was almost like, <laughs> if I was Mahela Jar Woodner, I'd be kind of saying, can you, can you just get out and leave us alone? We're talking about cricket here for now. Not We're not talking yeah. about you. Yeah, there, there is potential conflict there, but you can't get a family that's more passionate about the Mumbai Indians than the Ambani's and they've got plenty of money to throw behind it. Yeah, and it was also great with the with the personal touch where we, we saw Sachin Tendulkar almost exclusively at the at the buffet which was quite yeah fun. but anyway 
He seemed to be eating a lot. (laughs) He's got a bit bigger, hasn't he, since he finished? The other player that interested me in that documentary was Ishan Kishan. Yeah, it was quite touching to see his mum and to see how he where he came from and how excited he was to be going to join the Mumbai Indians at the start of last year. No doubt that he's a fantastic young player and everything. But I I don't know about you, DJ, but when you saw him actually training and you saw saw a bit of immaturity coming out, didn't you? Because he was he was messing around and he was not necessarily taking everything quite as seriously as he should do. And I was sat watching the documentary thinking, come on, Ishan, get yourself sorted out here. You're a cracking player. This is a massive opportunity for you. Concentrate, train, do what you can. But then you, on the other side, you could see Mahela Jai Wardner. Every time you saw Mahela Jai Wardner and Ishan Kishan together, Mahela Jai Wardner loves him. There's something in that player that Mahela Jai Wardner just thinks is, is just special. Um, and it'd be really, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Ishan Kishan gets on this season because if he kicks on, he could be a real force. Absolutely. And, and he's only 19, 20. I mean, he's got years of cricket ahead of him. So it's the maturity that comes with with experience. And I think that's when Kohli speaks of players like Prithvi Shaw and Shubman Gill being beyond their years and not being 10% of the player that they, they are at, at their age. I think that's what Kohli's identified in those two players. But yes, Kishan Kishan is a terrific player. I don't know whether you, whether you picked that up. Maybe it was in Hindi, but he actually said that uh, his mum pointed out that he's going to meet Sachin. And yeah. Kishan actually said Said that he he used to have a picture of him and he would pray to pray to that before he went out to bat. So I mean these guys are meeting their idols. Kishan's known him his entire his, yeah. his entire life. That, that's basically. one of the things that, that one of the things that those documentaries do so well, isn't it? Because they they remind you that these people that you see under a helmet wearing the kind of the outfit of their franchise who from a distance look, look exactly the same don't they you rem- it reminds you that they are actually just human beings and they're just like us you know they they, they love cricket and their fans and going on to see Sachin Tendulkar he was sat on the sidelines wasn't he with his pads on saying I want to bat now I want to, I want to bat now I want to go out and show Sachin what I can do and it, it's it's quite refreshing I think just to get reminded that these guys actually really care about it absolutely and and the season as it goes on you can see the drain it it um how how it drains the players and I thought that was particularly interesting as well. Discover one of the most beautiful lifestyle resorts in the Caribbean at the Accra Beach Hotel and Spa. Located on the south coast of Barbados, this beachfront property offers 224 rooms, sparkling pools, four restaurants, three bars, an on-site spa, event and conferencing facilities, and a welcoming team providing unparalleled relaxation to make your stay a memorable one. What are you waiting for? Book your reservation at this award-winning hotel today and experience the Caribbean dream. So just before we move on to the other teams, I just wanted to speak to you a little bit about the 100 and what's going on with that in England here. And I just wanted to get your take on that because like Brexit, this idea came mm-hmm. around as something that we thought will just go away. But like Brexit, again, it's it's almost upon us. So is the 100 firstly a reaction to the IPL? And secondly, will it even compete with the IPL? What, what, what's your take on that? I think first you need to go back to the start and you need to go back to the ECB before the IPL um, was, was getting underway. The ECB were talking to Alan Stanford in the Caribbean. Alan Stanford is now wearing an orange boiler suit in a, in a prison because he was done for fraud and all kinds of mismanagement of funds. But at the time, I don't know if you remember it, but there was a, a great big pallet kind of lofted into Lords, a load of money on it. And it was all about Alan Stanford's going to bring load of money into the English game. And there was that million pound match, a T20 match played in the Caribbean. Obviously, Alan Stanford then became a bit persona non grata and disappeared off the, off the scene because he's behind bars. And the ECB had invested their time in Mr. Stamford, as it turned out very unwisely. The months and years that had been invested into trying to forge his relationship with Alan Stamford and bring his money into the English game allowed the Indian BCCI in India to set up the IPL and really get a head start and make that the tournament. 
England, I think, were in a position to possibly do that before the IPL and lost their opportunity to do that. And England have been playing catch-up in domestic uh, T20 terms ever since because you know, T20 started in England back in 1993, I think it was, when the counties started playing it and thought it was a bit of a joke. It's obviously not. and it's, They obviously realised quite quickly that it wasn't a joke and that they could make a bit of money out of it and it was quite good fun to play. But in that time where it, the ECB were messing around with Alan Stanford, IPL just took off and went in stratospheric. And I think the ECB have just been looking with a little bit of jealousy ever since, thinking, I wish we had the IPL. Why couldn't we have done that to start with? So they've got the T20 Blast in England, and it's a very well supported 18 counties. But 18 is a lot of teams to have in a T20 tournament. So I think the idea with the, the 100 is to get something which is a little bit more user friendly, played over a shorter period, trying to attract as many big name stars as you possibly can. The ideal would be to have AB de Villiers, Virat Kohli, etc. in the various uh, franchises around the UK eight teams and they've tinkered with the format to make it the hundred to try and make it a little bit different and in ECB's words to appeal to a new audience now who that new audience is I don't think anybody's really identified them and we all know that you know the likes of you and me DJ and people listening to this cast iron cricket fans will turn up and support their teams or watch it on the television and always be there for cricket but there are people who like football rugby league other sports who do like to go along to the odd t20 match now and again maybe have a few beers enjoy it have a make it a social occasion i guess the target audience for the 100 is those guys the ones that float around the edges of cricket and to try and bring them into cricket to make them full-time fans. And I think with the way cricket is and 18 counties and having to support 18 counties, there's pressure on the ECB to try and bring something in which makes some money. And it's sadly all about money, I think, this this tournament. And to try and um, get enough money in the coffers to sustain all 18 counties because that isn't necessarily a, a formality because some of the smaller counties do struggle financially and, and do very much depend on the ECB to help them out every year. And I think you know, going back to what I said at the start, I am very much a traditionalist. I love the county championship. And 18 counties in the county championship, I think, is the envy of the world. I think as a domestic structure and as a domestic four-day competition, it is superb. And the history of each of those counties should not be undervalued. And when people kind of very flippantly say, well, the likes of Leicester and Glamorgan and stuff, they can, it doesn't really matter if they go out of business, does it? Well, let's just tone down the county championship. Don't. There's people in Leicester love Leicester. There's people in Glamorgan love Glamorgan, Derbyshire, etc. Some of these small counties mean an awful lot to those uh, local populations. So it's important that England keeps those 18 counties. And if the 100 does that, I'll be honest with you, when it first was um, talked about, I was very, very anti it. And the more I thought about it in the months and probably years now since it was first touted, I've come round to the kind of way of thinking, well, you know, if this comes in to the English game, And if it does attract new a new audience and if it does make money and if it does encourage the big name stars to come to England and if it does encourage TV money to come into the game, then if that is filtered down to the 18 counties and it sustains the county championship, which I love, then it can only be a good thing. The problem with that last paragraph that I've just given you is there were about 12 ifs in that. And that's what we don't know, DJ, at the moment, is, is exactly how it's going to translate into bums on seats, into money into the game. And that is the big imponderable. Yeah, you, know, you can you can tinker with the game as much as you like. But for a new audience out there, if you're trying to attract them, it's still cricket. And I think it's going to be exciting on the one hand, but I think it's quite worrying on the other hand. And I am edging towards being a fan of the 100 and seeing that there is a need for something to add life to domestic cricket. I'm not quite sure if creating almost like a whole new game is the right way forward. Very interesting. And my one thought on that would be that whenever new formats come around, India winning a World Cup at that format does help. So maybe that would be something the ECB should consider. We're just making India world champions to start with. <laughs> Absolutely. That that's how the one day game kicked off in India and that the IPL was a followed a few months after India won the two thousand seven World T twenty yeah. final yeah. against Pakistan. So A new feature on the Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast is the letters page, very much in inverted commas, because what we want you to do is to record your comments on to your telephone 
Send us the audio to cricketbadger at hotmail.com and we'll play it out as part of that letter page function. Maybe even react to what you say, whether it's an opinion on cricket, international or domestic. Maybe you've got some selection suggestions for the England team or for your county. Maybe you just want to have a bit of a rant. Make it anything up to a minute long. Send it in to cricketbadger at hotmail.com and you might find yourself on next week's Cricket Badger Radio Show podcast. Got more IPL teams, so should we talk about those? Yeah, sure. Do you want to start with, with Chennai? Absolutely. They're, yeah, they're, they're a, a, a big side, aren't they? Defending champions, Chennai. MS Dhoni, one of the, the greats of the game, isn't he? Where does, I mean, just, just before I start, MS Dhoni, legend... Followed Tendulkar, didn't he, as the poster boy. Virat Kohli, has he t- totally replaced Downey now as the as the main focus in India? I think I would I would think so, but they I, I suppose they perform different functions. Tony's kind of on his way out, the legend that won everything there is to win. And Kohli's hungry and he's looking for stuff to win. So I, I think they perform different functions for the Indian psyche. So um, I think they're quite comfortable with those roles at the yeah. moment. Well, he's, he's, he's huge, isn't he, for CSK? Um, the only worry for CSK, I think, is that they are starting to get a little bit older, aren't they? You know, the likes of Dhoni, the likes of um, Suresh Raina, Imran Dahir even, who's in their side or potentially in their side this time around, and Ravindra Jadeja. None of them are getting uh, any younger. Shane Watson. There's a few kind of old stages there. And you can say, well, that's great for experience, which it is. And it's great uh, that it's great to have those names in there because they're all talented players. But yeah, you know, they're, they're starting to get a bit long in the tooth. So at some stage, CSK is going to have to shake it up a little bit. And going back to the Mumbai thing that we spoke about, you know, the one focus that they had was to bring in youngsters, wasn't it? And to, and to kind of create a culture, bring the youngsters through. Potentially, CSK are going to have to do that at some stage. Dwayne Bravo, even as their all rounder, is not getting any younger. So that would be the worry with CSK. But you, you know, the names that we've mentioned are all match winners, so they do have every single chance. I think every single time they've played in the IPL they did miss a couple of years they've made the the last four the playoffs and yeah you'd, you'd have to say on the names that we've said they've got every chance of uh, getting to at least the playoffs again this time I think they're a very good franchise would you, would you agree they're maybe looking a little bit old I, I think they'd you'd find it difficult to bet against them for a top four finish they've um, done it every year they've played seven finals three wins they've got players who know how to play the IPL right and yeah. So one of the things with the IPL and one of the things that's frustrated me for a long time is the auction and switching up the team every three years. So when Chennai made its re-entry into the IPL, they very much went with a team that was only for the next three years. So I'm not sure there's a lot of benefit in actually grooming youngsters because what happens is three years down the line, you shuffle everyone around. Chennai has gone with consistency. They've gone with experience. And we saw it last year. They won the whole the whole show. So it's a good point that DJ, which, um, but I mean, Mumbai kind of retained quite a few of their youngsters for the second time. The Pandya brothers are still there. And I, I do quite like the, the idea of having some fresh faces, a combination of some old stages and some young, young talent as well. I also think the, the, the auction is one of the, the best things about the IPL. Obviously it's not cricket, but I think the kind of two days of working out who's going to go for what money and who's going to get taken, who's going to not get taken, who's going to be surplus to requirements. I think it's quite exciting. I think that's you know the, possibly one of the best advertising campaigns you could have for a competition. It comes in advance of it, obviously, and you, you get excited about the IPL you know, long before it starts. And that's absolutely right. I mean, we start looking at the IPL in January and by the time it's April, it's an absolute crescendo. So yeah, exactly. that is right. It's that Badger style. Let's have a look at Delhi Capitals. This is bizarre for me. Why are they not the Daredevils anymore? Because it, it almost seems like the owner of Delhi Daredevils sat down and thought, right, we're rubbish. We're doing absolutely nothing here. Let's change our names. Let's have a rebrand. Let's get a new logo. And then we can go into a tournament. We can have a fresh approach. And we can absolutely be fantastic. It doesn't get around the fact that you're not winning matches, does it? No, it doesn't. And I will admit that I am a Delhi Daredevils or Delhi Capitals fan. Being from Delhi originally, I did watch them in their first few years where they had literally everyone and they were yeah. smashing it. You had A.B. De Villiers, Shikhar Dhawan. Shikhar's back, isn't he? He is back. And when we're waiting for him to bring us the trophy because he, he's the man. So just coming to the name change, actually i think it's a superstition thing a and b you had a team called the rising super giant 
yep. singular that changed its name from the plural version and then went to the finals. So maybe there is something to, to, to the name change and all the Delhi Capitals fans will be um, will be raring to hear that. I mean, Shik- Shikhar's a huge signing, isn't he? Yeah. He, he is potentially capable of winning a, a T20 on, on his own. And you get these batsmen, you, you know, you look through the various squads and you've got the likes of De Villiers, you've got the likes of Kohli um, for Bangalore, who we'll get to in a sec. You've got um, Shikhar, Rohit Sharma, who you know that if it's their day and they, they bat at the top of the order, if they bat through the majority of the 20 overs, they will win the match on their own. And Shikhar's one of those. So if, if he has a stellar um, 2019 IPL campaign for Delhi, he's going to make a huge amount of difference to them. That's absolutely right. And what Delhi have lacked is consistency in the last few years. They did pretty well until Viru was up at the top of the order and then we lost him to uh, Punjab. And Shikhar, along with Prithvi Shaw, Rishabh Pant, Shreyas Ayer, Hanuma Vihari, I mean, that's a great core batting lineup, and yeah. it's all Indian, so you don't need to drop people to fit in foreign players and, and all of that stuff. So, And it's the formula that CSK have followed successfully as well, having a strong core of Indian players, because we've seen that teams that have very strong overseas players may not always end up doing too well. Quite a nice balance, isn't it, that Delhi have got? I mean, Rishabh Pant, I think he's a superb player. I mm-hmm. um, really like him. He had a great IPL last year, didn't he? And uh, you look down, yeah, as you say, the, the top order is fairly settled there with, with local players. And then you've got the likes of maybe Chris Morris and um, Kahisa Rabada, who can just fit in and you don't have to worry about the, the quantities of overseas players now because you, you're pretty much you know, fielding overseas bowlers, aren't you? That's right. And we've got Colin Ingram and Colin Munro as well. So two Collins that can really go pretty hard. Yeah, Colin Ingram's a great T20 player. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm hopeful for Delhi. I'm, I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to jinx it, but I'm hoping that we, we're we not going to come last like we did. Wait, I can't see them making the playoffs, DJ. Oh, we will see. We'll see. Six weeks. It, 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 it will rely heavily on two or three of their players, won't it? which I, I guess you could say for quite a lot of them, but you, you need Shikhar to perform at the top of the order. Um, I mean, Shreya Shari is a good player, isn't he? Rishabh mm-hmm. is superb. So you know, if, if they do fire, re- realistically, any of the eight teams could win it because you look down their various squads, they all have match winners. It's just which franchise gets the momentum and gets going in the right direction, isn't it? And uh, you know, if Delhi get that, then the rebranding may have worked. And that's it. I mean, it's getting on a roll at the right time in the tournament. And Mumbai are masters of it. Chennai are pretty good at it. Bangalore had one year where they won four or five games in a row. And Kohli scored, I think, 400 in five games or something yeah. crazy like that. So it's getting on a roll at the right time, timing your charge effectively and making sure you make the playoffs, saving yourself to the end. It's that Badger style. I don't have much uh, faith in the Kings Eleven team. Um, it has to be said. Yeah, you know, they they've got a few players in there. I mean, David Miller, um, he's a he's a very dangerous T20 player. But you look down their list, and I, I'm struggling to work out where they're going to get too many wins from. Myself, I, I think their bowling's a little bit light. I just wouldn't really back them. So they've, they've still got Gale, haven't they? And they've got Rahul at the top. So I, I think a lot of their wins came from that last year. They were doing pretty well in the first half of the IPL until their form kind of just fell away weirdly towards the end. Ashwin was skipper. That brought about some interesting moves, some of which worked, some of them didn't actually work too well. Ashwin's got a point to prove before the World Cup. He's, he's just come out and said that his record in, in one-day cricket is actually quite good. And world, white ball cricket is quite good. And he's suffering from the perception that you need wrist spinners to win limited overs games. Yeah. He'll have a point to prove. And what better time to prove it just before the World Cup? you you got a few in there. I mean, Chris Gale's interesting, isn't he? Because he, he is probably more capable than anybody of winning a game on his own. But he may be these days, is it one in every eight or nine, ten games? Yeah, Chris Gale of old would do it maybe one in every three. One of the players that will be interesting for, from an English perspective is Sam Curran, who is obviously had a, a stellar 12 months for England. Um, doesn't necessarily play the one-day stuff for England as much as the as the test matches, but he's a, a fine talent. How he'll do in Eng- Indian conditions will be interesting to see. So, yeah, gonna be it's going to be interesting with the Kings eleven. but I think there's a lot of question marks around their side. Andrew Tai is the other guy who... In the big bash, he's superb. For Perth Scorchers, he just runs in and, and takes wickets. But the conditions in India are totally different. And whether he can do the same for the Kings eleven remains to be seen, I think. That, that is right. And I mean, he, he was one of the big wicket takers last year. So they'll be hoping for him to go well again. It's that Badger style. 
Colcat and Knight Riders. I'm doing this in alphabetical order. You, you look at uh, them, and I, I, I just love the Sun on the Ring pinch hitting role that he has. He comes in at the, right at the top of the order, probably going to open with Chris Lynn this time around. And at the start of it, when I first saw them do it, I just thought, what on earth are you playing out here? Sun on the Ring, but opening the innings, it's just ridiculous. But every now and again, he comes off, doesn't he? And he, he had a couple of really good innings last year, which when he does come off, he scores at such a rate because he just swings about at everything with his eyes shut. It, it sets KK off on such a roll that they can get a huge, huge score. And with Chris Lynn at the other end, he is one of the real explosive talents at the top of the order in any team. He he can win matches. He's one of those that uh, falls in that bracket of winning matches on his own. Andre Russell back for them as well, who is uh, one of my favourite T20 players, the all-rounder. So they're looking OK, I think, KKR. Carlos Brathwaite okay. comes in. Yeah, KKR are, are always a, a threat, uh, especially in their own conditions. It's interesting you spoke about Noreen and Lynn. Noreen's actually been the revelation with the bat, as you said. And I think it's been brought about by his uh, bowling action being questioned. So he's added another string to his bow as he goes around playing uh, T20 cricket around the world. But Lynn actually hasn't set the IPL on fire. No, no, he's a massive name in the Big Bash. But I can't actually remember him just teeing off and scoring massive runs. I, I do remember a few scratchy innings against spin. And maybe it's that the pitches take more spin than they would in Australia. But he's a, he's a beast in the Big Bash. But he isn't actually hasn't replicated that kind of form in IPL games. And he's had shoulder injuries and things. But maybe that's the reason. I mean, he's, he's been an absolute dog, doesn't he, by shoulder injuries. It's, it's mm. Every time he's got any momentum in his career he's kind of fallen on his shoulder and been out for a few months but I just like the look of KKR this time they'd be my dark horses for it for winning the IPL I think if you Robin Atapa is a, is a very good T20 player Andre Russell Carlos Brothwaite in that lower middle order you know, if they get into a situation where they need sort of 40 or 20 balls and those two are in the crease they've got every single chance in the world haven't they so they're gonna... don't forget their skipper uh, DK he's, yeah, he's exactly. one of the best finishers in the world yeah. uh, as we I mean we, I think we mentioned it earlier yeah. But they, they DK have, is just amazing at the end of the innings. They, yeah, they definitely have their merits, don't they? Uh, I think KKR. They'd be one to watch for sure. It's that Badger style. Get on to the Rajasthan Royals now, but Joss Butler, who had that superb run for Mumbai Indians, he was he's seven fifties on the bounce or something, wasn't it, that forced his way into the England reckoning? Yeah, you know, destroyed my IPL team and my, my IPL fantasy cricket season. Just kept losing points. <laughs> the other guy who had him in the team as captain, anyway. Yeah, so, yeah he, he is. I would suggest probably the best T20 player. Um, around at the moment. The innings he scored this winter for England, 150 off something like 70, 78 70 yeah. or something like Incredible that. Incredible. You know, when he gets going, there is nobody better to watch than Joss Butler. And I think, it, you know, with him in the team, Sanju Sampson's a, a terrific player. You know, Ben Stokes is in there for, for them this time. Joffre Archer, who's probably on the verge of, you know, making his debut for England in, in one day cricket. They've got some got some real players in there who can, can win matches for them. Um, Stephen Smith looks like he's going to be playing because there were some injury concerns about him that he might miss the, uh, the start of it. And obviously not picked. By Australia means that he can uh, he can land early and get himself ready. So uh, you know he's always obviously going to be a threat as well. Be interesting to see how he gets on a free ban. Um, but they you know there's some real players in there. It's just potentially bowling that might let them down. I would suggest. But you know there's some firepower in their batting. Make no mistake. Yeah, and you've got players like Rahane as well who are looking to make a mark yes. before the World Cup. Jofra Archer, I think, has just become eligible today for England uh, for the World Cup. Steve Smith will be out to prove a point. And Rajasthan historically have punched above their weight in, in, in the IPL. I mean, they, they did win the first edition of the whole show uh, under Shane Warne, and he's going to be around as mentor. So I wouldn't take them lightly, but I do, I'm not tipping them for a playoff spot. It's that Badger style. Now, RCB, DJ, are the strangest team in the IPL. You look down over their history, you look at some of the players that have played for the Royal Challengers down the years, and they've had some of the biggest names in cricket. And they've still got two of them, in Virat Kohli and A.B. de Villiers. But I, I do think that potentially maybe not having quite so many massive stars might be to their benefit this time around. Because I think they've always played a little bit like a team of individuals rather than a, than as a team. And a team of individuals, like you said, can go on a little bit of a run of winning three or four on the bounce, but they can also lose. When RCB lose, they can lose quite badly. 
if AB de Villiers is fit, if Virat Kohli scores the way to runs that you'd expect Virat Kohli to score, and then some of the others contribute as well, maybe RCB can get a little bit closer to lifting the IPL than um, I would give them credit for. They're always quite short in the bookies markets because of the names that they have in there on their roster. But it's asking an awful lot for Virat to do what he does game in, game out. AB de Villiers is the same and therefore you're looking further down the list at some of the others and you wonder quite how RCB are going to win a few games. I would suggest that they start with preparing the pitch that the Bangalore curator prepared for the test match against Australia. I think the issue's always been that they've scored a lot of runs and then their bowling has just let them down. Yeah. They've got a good spinner in Chehel. They had Mesh Yadav as well, who's, who's quick. So they need... They, then they, they went for a lot of bowlers the year after they were told that their bowling wasn't good enough and then they, they didn't do very well with that either. So I think their best shot is how... KKR actually had their revival, which is by preparing spinning wickets and and spinning the opposition out and just trusting their batsmen of the class of Kohli and A.B. de Villiers to take them across the line. Yeah. I think that's actually got to be their strategy, but I don't know whether it will be at the Jinnaswamy Stadium because maybe the crowds just want to see sixes. If, if I asked you, DJ, if, if you could spend 24 hours in the body of a current cricketer and live their life for a day, I'll give you my answer before you give you time to think about yours, but... Um, my answer would be A.B. de Villiers. I think A.B. de Villiers is just incredible. If he's on form, he can play every single shot and he invents more. He can hit. He's a complete 360 player. He is just astonishing. When he's in form, there is nobody better to watch than A.B. de Villiers. And if I could be him for a day, I would just stand in front of the mirror and just admire myself, I think, for 24 hours. He's just, he's just an incredible player. <laughs> I think that's what Virat Kohli does anyway. So, <laughs> um, I, I, I think that is right. I mean, you wouldn't probably need to be De Villiers for more than a few hours to score a ton of runs either. So, well, about 36 balls is all you need, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I would probably go with Kohli, but um, I mean, his his work ethic is what I would. Yeah. what I'd try to work out. I mean, what he's done to himself, um, his, his transformation from a very good player to potentially one of the greatest players to have played the game. I mean, I think it's been remarkable and it's happened in front of eyes. So, yeah. I, th- um, I think if he retired today, he would go down as um, one of the best Indians of all time and he's still got a few years left. Um, yeah, he, yeah. He's terrific. I mean, one of the things I think as well that people don't necessarily totally comprehend is that if you are a, a, an A-lister in Indian cricket, you are just so under the microscope. It's unbelievable. I, I can remember going to Lords to watch Shem Tendulkar. Do you remember the, the tsunami game they played at the um, rest of the world um, played at uh, mm-hmm. Lords mm-hmm. to try to raise money for Sri Lanka? And yeah. um, Sachin played in that. And I remember I was kind of waiting around afterwards to try and get his autograph. And there was about a thousand Indian fans just waiting outside the pavilion as it happened they took Sachin across over the because there's like a bit of a flyover over an archway and he kind of almost went out the back door and escaped so none of the guys because he I mean he knew that if he'd walked out into that lot he'd have taken about three hours to get through it the intense kind of scrutiny that Virat's under every single day of his life and he comes through it he comes through it classy He's just churns out runs. I just think he's an exceptional, you know, role model for anybody that wants to pick up a bat in India or anywhere. He's a massive role model. Absolutely, and I'd recommend an article on um, by an ESPN non-cricket writer who followed Virat Kohli for a day. He 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 doesn't see any of the cricketing bit. He just follows Kohli around for a day during during his commercial engagements, and he writes about that. I, I I'll give you the name of the article in 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 a second, but it's it's. It's quite, it's quite amazing what um, what what he goes through. So it's called the strange life of India's cricket god, yeah. Virat Kohli, keeping up with the Kohli. Yeah, it's by Wright Thompson. It's just absolutely amazing what what he deals with on a daily basis. We yeah. can't even imagine it. I know. I was going to say you, you can't comprehend it. Can you? you? Can imagine? You can try and imagine, but then you'd probably have to multiply it by about ten to actually get the reality because it's just incredible what he you know what he's up against, and he just comes through it so serenely at times. I mean, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he has those moments, but you know he's he's he is tremendous. But when you've got the, I mean, your picks Coley, my picks De Villiers, and that's why I asked the question about the twenty four hour thing is, you know, both those guys are playing for the same franchise. That is why. So much emphasis is, you know, yeah, you know, the bookies are so short, and a lot of money goes on these uh, on the challenges Bangalore because those two play for them. 
those two can't win an IPL on their own. They need the rest of that squad to contribute. And that's where I think the RCB might fall down. Yeah, they tried a couple of years ago, just scoring tons of yeah. runs, and they, they failed at the in the final. But, uh, it was the Kohli and De Villiers show, and you had people flying from all over the world to, yeah. to, to watch IPL games, which was frankly remarkable as well. It's that Badger style. We have one franchise left to talk about, and they are my second pick for the title, Sunrisers Hyderabad. They are, I think if Mumbai don't win it, Sunrisers will. And I think, um, yeah, they're going to miss Shikhar, who's obviously gone to your capitals, as they're called these days. But Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing for me with the Sunrisers, DJ, is the captaincy. You've got the David Warner show rolling back into town. He obviously missed last year's IPL because of his uh, Sandpaper Gate suspension. And Kane Williamson took over last year. Um, for Sunrisers, captained them through, and I thought he was superb. Not only was he, I think, the leading scorer in the competition last year, but he also, um, he's got a very calm, placid nature, Kane Williamson. And in those heated moments in, in T20 cricket and IPL, where you need to make the right decision, you need to stay calm. And Kane Williamson's superb at that. And I think he led them brilliantly. Now, if I don't know if they've made a decision yet. You can tell me. But it's between Warner because he was the captain. Williamson took over last year. Have they made a decision? And if not, which one would you go with? I don't think they've made a decision yet while we're recording this. But if it was me, I would go with Ken Williamson. I mean, we've seen the issues that Warner has had with leadership already. The trouble naturally is... Can you play both in the same team, given the limit on yeah. overseas this is, players? Because the year before last, when both of them were in the, in the squad, David Warner played as captain, and Williamson missed a lot of games, didn't he? Because they couldn't fit him in. And Williamson, and, showed, Williamson showed last year just how good he is. And that is going to be the issue. I mean, Williamson was remarkable as a player last year. He was absolutely fantastic. He was great in the field. He was a great ambassador for the game. He's always been... He, he's led New Zealand with distinction as well. And he's done really well in the IPL last year. It's going to be a tough choice. Warner is the more explosive left-handed option. I'm almost going to say that Williamson will take the captaincy and it may mean that Warner doesn't actually play every game, which frankly, until last year, was absolutely unthinkable. David Warner defined the run that Sunrisers Hyderabad has been on for a, for a long time. They were the erstwhile deck and chargers, which uh, went bust and Hyderabad got itself another franchise called the Sunrise of Hyderabad. That's actually done really well, that you'd, franchise. Yeah, you'd think, wouldn't you, that it, you, you would try and play both because both of them are going to bring so much to that side. But if you, if you play both as overseas players, you're going to have to make sacrifices further down the list. And that's right. And you've got those fantastic uh, spinners and, and stuff which you, you're going to end up losing out on. You've got all-rounders like Shakib Al Hassan as well. Yeah. Are you going to sacrifice that those five overs and, and that batting capability? And Rashid, or pure Rashid Khan. Yeah, I mean, Rashid will walk into that team. So that those are your four players. And if you want to make any more changes, you, you're going to have to drop one of them. It's going to be tough. I mean, you, you look at that that squad though, and you know, with Kumar in there with the with the ball as well. I mean, Billy Stanlake, the Australian. From what we've just said, it's going to be unlikely he plays that many matches because how are you going to fit him in? But mm-hmm. Billy, St- Billy Stanlake with his you know tall fella bowls Yorkers at the death. He, he's a, he's a terrific T Twenty player. So they have got an embarrassment of riches, the Sunrisers. Yeah, yeah, and I mean they've got Siddharth Kaul as well, who um, did really well last year and would complement Bhubi pretty well with the ball. So yeah. maybe Billy Stanley doesn't make it in 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 the eleven on on that count. It's that Badger style. Let, let's round this up then, DJ. I, I think I've already said mine. I'm going to go with Mumbai as my first choice to win the win the trophy. Sunrisers would be my second team, and uh, I think uh, Rajasthan Royals would be my uh, and KKR would be my uh, third and fourth choices. Would you be along the same lines? So I'll go with three teams. I think CSK. My mind tells me that CSK is going to win it again, just because they're so good at doing whatever they do yeah. and pulling it through. So. My heart tells me that Delhi is going to win it finally <laughs> for us. So uh, I'm going to go with that. Don't, don't listen to your heart, TJ. Don't listen to uh, it. <laughs> well, I, well it, it hasn't worked for the last 11 years. So <laughs> um, hopefully the name change brings more luck to us. And my third team is going to be an unfancied Rajasthan Royals team because I think they've they've got a point to prove. They haven't done that well since the first edition of the IPL. So... Everyone wants them to succeed. 
they're, they're the nice guys of the IPM. What one thing's for sure, it's going to be fantastic. It starts very soon, and I can't wait personally. It's, uh, it's the only the only get, kind of going back to your first question. It does take a long time to get from start to finish, isn't it? The IPL. You've got that to, is right. You've got yeah. to love your cricket to stay with it, but it's uh, it's worth it. It was 56 games last year. It's ending, I think, 10 days before the World Cup starts, or but 19th of May is when it ends. I think the English and Australian players are, are leaving around the 1st of May, so um, it'll be more Indian players involved after that. So, Do you think there's going to be a, a situation where some of the Indian World Cup winners are rested towards the end as well? Well, they have been declared as World Cup winners already. Sorry, no, that, 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 was, a, that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> a Freudian slip. Yeah. And, yeah, some of the Indian World Cup squad, are they, is there going to be scope for them to maybe miss the end of the tournament too? I think if they're injured, they won't play. But unless they're injured, they will play. At the slightest injury, at the slightest hint of an injury, they'll be pulled out. Yeah, make no mistake, Indian listeners, I meant England World Cup winners. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Pleasure to talk to you again, DJ. Great stuff. Great, great to join you again, James. Thank you for your time. Pleasure as always. I'll talk to you soon, mate. Thank you. Cheers. It's that Badger style. I enjoyed that chat with DJ. I hope you did too. We'll get DJ back on the Cricket Budget Radio Show podcast again in the future. As I said at the start, please like, subscribe and leave some lovely comments so others can be encouraged to get involved with the Cricket Budget Radio Show podcast too. Thank you very much indeed for listening this week. If you like this one and you're new to it, check back on our library of previous editions. Some great guests that we've had over the last 18 months. And until we meet again, enjoy your cricket badges. Just stop.